As a society, we have been programmed and conditioned to believe that men are the narcissists. They are the abusers. But women can be highly narcissistic and abusive too, creating strong trauma bonds with their partners, which is why I gear many of my videos towards helping men who are in toxic relationships or experiencing the devastating after effects of a toxic relationship. I'm Lise LeBlanc. I've worked as a therapist for over 20 years and as a life coach for over a decade. Every week I meet with men who are being psychologically manipulated and abused. Psychological abuse is defined as the use of words, emotions, and non-physical actions to weaken, frighten, confuse, distort, uh, and manipulate someone's thoughts and actions, harming their sense of self and well-being. And some might think that these men are naturally submissive, weak-minded, unattractive, or don't have the skills and resources to find a healthy partner. But they are often highly successful, intelligent, strong, attractive, committed, loving men who've fallen prey to a toxic woman, lured right into the maze while swatting away their own self-doubts and instead giving her the benefit of the doubt getting more and more emotionally invested and disoriented with every step towards her. So in today's video, I'm explaining how the narcissist traps you using the art of illusion, confusion, and manipulation to hijack your brain's reward pathways by using your natural needs, impulses, and instincts against you. And if the narcissist succeeds, it will be just like checking into the Hotel California by forming a trauma bond that is so strong, you feel like you can never leave. Okay, so first, let's start with the art of illusion and how the trauma bond starts to form. First, let me explain that a trauma bond is a strong emotional attachment that a person forms towards an abuser. When you are trauma bonded, you are psychologically enslaved through an intermittent schedule of positive reinforcement and punishment that creates brain chemical dependency on the abuser. In the beginning, through love and sex bombing, it's all rewards. The narcissist is inflating your ego, sexually exciting you, and meeting all of your emotional needs. They are open, caring, they're sharing personal information, showing deep interest, vulnerability, and you are being bombarded by your own brain chemistry, getting a constant rush of dopamine and other happy hormones. You feel intoxicated, euphoric, and intensely attracted to the person who is firing up your reward circuits. Immediately, your brain associates this intense pleasure with the narcissist. This isn't drastically different from the honeymoon stage of any relationship, except that everything is ultra emotionally charged and happening on turbo speed. Things feel so perfect. So why not leave it at that? Because attraction does not equate attachment. And without strong attachment, the narcissist cannot extract what they need from you. Remember, their ego's survival depends on you or a someone fulfilling their needs. And this could be, you know, with your money, your sex, your attention, your energy, your emotional support, your contacts, anything they need to fuel their false fantasy self. Since they don't have the capacity to build trust and intimacy or bond, they need to lure you into their fantasy land to increase your attachment and get you psychologically addicted to them, a toxic partner will start withdrawing from you and devaluing you while still intermittently rewarding you. And let me explain why this counterintuitive strategy works so well. So when this approach avoidance cycle begins, you are still being mostly rewarded and you are already highly dependent on this constant stream of happy hormones that these re rewards are providing you with. So when the narcissist starts delivering random bursts of punishment, criticisms, accusations, and other forms of devaluation, the happy chemical dance in your head comes crashing to a halt 
and you go into a state of withdrawal and it feels terrible. Anxiety, worry, restlessness, can't eat, can't sleep, can't stop thinking about her. But don't worry, she has the antidote and all you have to do to feel better is comply and submit by doing whatever she wants or needs in that moment. This cycle of abuse and devaluation interlaced with affection, sex, or other sweet gestures creates a ton of cognitive dissonance. Hence comes the art of confusion. Cognitive dissonance is the distress of trying to hold two contradictory beliefs at the same time. So for example, belief number one, she cheated on me and has a pattern of breaching my trust. And belief number two, she loves me and would never intentionally harm you. So as your brain attempts to consolidate these two conflicting beliefs, you can either accept the reality of the situation or you can resolve the dissonance by deceiving yourself and eliminating the objective truth that she is cheating on you and consistently breaching your trust. But if you do this, you must buy into the narcissist's excuses, rationalizations. Once you've successfully discarded the truth, you can breathe a sigh of relief and your brain can relax because you have successfully overridden your own logic and settled back into the narcissist's narrative, which in time becomes the only narrative. On the other hand, if you side with logic before being trauma bonded, you can breathe a huge sigh of relief and set your mind at rest. Usually after a few weeks of research and figuring out what you were dealing with and what happened to you. But if you exit the relationship after being trauma bonded, there will be a painful detox and healing period that will likely go on for several months maybe even years, depending on how long your toxic relationship lasted. So as time goes on, the rewards become more sporadic and sparse. You must work harder to get them and they're replaced by more and more devaluation and punishment. Every time the narcissist demeans you or pulls away, the happy chemical dance in your brain gets disrupted. Your brain has already associated the narcissist as an intense source of pleasure as well as your source of pain relief. So you comply, submit and step deeper into their maze. After abusive episodes, she may become caring, affectionate and nurturing, easing your anxieties, reminding you of her good side, but more importantly of her ability to rebalance your brain chemistry and make you feel good again. As you become more and more confused, constantly deceiving yourself, of course, the narcissist is simultaneously using her final weapon, the art of manipulation. She knows your wants, needs, desires, fears, vulnerabilities, but perhaps more importantly, she is using your integrity against you. She wants you to question whether you are a man of your word, a man who can keep his promises to provide, protect, be her hero, never hurt her, whatever promises she extracted from you. Implicitly or explicitly also threatening to find someone else who can meet her needs if you can't be that hero. This provokes your fears, your competitive nature, your insecurities, and your need to prove that you are who you say you are. So while you are busy doubting yourself, trying to resolve cognitive dissonance and balancing your dysregulated brain chemistry, you completely lose sight of the fact that the narcissist's fantasy illusion is nowhere near reality. But her small sweet gestures here and there keep you following her false light towards your false fantasy future, a tiny crumb at a time, a bit of approval, a little treat, a note, and because you are dying for affection, this is seen as evidence that the fantasy partner they once were in the beginning is still accessible. Your fantasy future might be possible and maybe it's all going to be worth it in the end. So the push pull hot cold, she loves me, she loves me not intensifies as time goes on, becoming more and more abusive as she tests the limits of what you will tolerate. And with every cycle, you become more and more chemically addicted to her 
as the source of your pleasure, your pain, your pain relief, and eventually your psychological survival. And so you endlessly adjust your behavior, trying to accommodate the narcissist's wants and needs, try to avoid provoking her and avoiding dealing with the conflict, the drama, the punishments and withdrawals. But it is these adjustments to your actions, your personality, your beliefs that are positively reinforcing the narcissist's efforts to continue exerting control. Uh, over you and extracting, exploiting and exhausting all of your mental, emotional, financial and whatever other resources that you may have. And the saddest part is, is that you are probably thinking you're affecting some type of change in them. You think maybe that you are saving them, fixing them, rescuing them, but you're not. They are changing you. And if you stay too long, you'll discover that you cannot find the passage back to the place you were before. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my playlist on narcissistic personality disorder.